The messages you are about to hear were first given on our daily radio broadcast by Dr. Woodrow Kroll. The series is entitled, When God Doesn't Answer. To introduce the series, here's Don Hawkins. Today, Wood, you're addressing what I think is probably one of the most needed questions related to getting answers to prayer, our relationship with God. Oh, I agree, Don. Uh, In many respects, this is the bottom line of answered prayer. If we're to get answers to our prayers, we have to have the kind of relationship with God that is going to cause him to want to answer our prayers. How's my relationship to the one I'm praying to? That's, That's the real question. Obviously, a faulty relationship with God is not going to be any help to us in getting our prayers answered. And our interest today on Back to the Bible, as it was last week, is the question of how to get answers to your prayers. When God doesn't answer, what do we do then? What's the problem when we don't seem to be getting through to God? Well, today you and I live in what some have called the dysfunctional family age. All you have to do is pick up a book or a magazine, go into a Christian bookshop. You can read books everywhere about the dysfunctional family today. In fact, radio and television programs have been spawned to help us bring some sense out of our relationships with others. But my friends, the fractured family relationship is only evidence of a deeper dysfunction. And that's the fractured relationship we have with God. You see, fractured families are the effect. Fractured individuals are the cause. And if we're going to fix the family, we have to fix the person. We have to fix people. Because people are the problem in fractured relationships. When our relationship with our spouse is faulty, when our relationship perhaps with our boss is faulty, when we have a faulty relationship with our children... You know what one of the first casualties of a faulty relationship is? It's communication. It's the ability to talk to people with whom we have no good relationship. It's really hard to talk to people when you're not building a relationship with them, isn't it? Now, you spouses, you know what that's like. Uh, Ladies, supposing your husband does something that makes you angry. What's the first response that you usually have for him? You clam up, isn't that right? You give them the silent treatment. And men, you do the same thing to your wives. You torture them with non-communication. When your teenage son broke your house rules, when he came home late, two hours late last night, did you notice how silent he was this morning at the breakfast table? You see, communication is one of the first casualties of a faulty relationship. How many times I've heard people say to me, My husband just doesn't talk with me anymore. Or my boss never takes time to sit down and talk about how things are going in the office. Have you ever said that? What about this? My daughter doesn't seem to call home as often as she used to. Oh, I know she has a life of her own. She has things to do. But I feel that she's growing more distant every day. Now, those are the kind of common complaints by people who experience faulty relationships. Those are the kinds of relationships that get broken, and when they're broken, it's just hard to talk with those people with whom we have that relationship. Well, if it's hard to talk with people here, imagine what it's like talking with God. If you have a faulty relationship with God... It's easy to understand how it's possible not to get answers to your prayers. It's easy to understand how that you might think you're really not getting through to God. See, the things that trouble our communication with others frequently trouble our communication with God as well. When we fail God, our prayers seem to lack the the punch that they need to get through to Him. When relational roadblocks pop up between God and us, they keep God from answering our prayers. So today, we want to focus on your relationship with God. What are some of the failures that keep your prayers from being effective? Well, the Bible identifies many of them, but the one I want to address today relates directly to God. Are you having trouble getting answers to your prayers? Does it seem to you like God just isn't listening? Well, if that's the case, you need to examine your relationship with God. If you find that your relationship is inadequate... You may have hit the nail right on the head, the cause for your unanswered prayer in your life. So let's focus on God today, our failure to respect God for who He is and what He's done. Now, if I ask you, do you know who God is? You obviously say, of course I do. He's the creator. God is the sustainer of all life. God is the sovereign God of the universe. He's the eternal, omniscient, loving redeemer of mankind. But when you say that, it sounds a little bit like uh, your answer came right out of a textbook. 
Who is God? I mean, really, who is God? Reach down deep into your daily experience and identify who God is in your life. Can you tell me who God is to you? You see, it's one thing to expound the virtues of God like you've just come out of Theology 101 class. It's quite another to see God through the piles of dirty laundry on the floor or the mundane sameness of data entry. Who is God in your life today? What is your relationship with God? Perhaps uh, more to the point is this question. How do you treat God? Oh, you may respect Him, but from the attitudes and actions of your life today, how would God know that you respect Him? If you're examining everything in your life for the fingerprints of God, would there be sufficient evidence to prove that you have a vibrant relationship with God? So how is it today? Who is God to you? What is God doing in your life? What is your relationship with God today? Now, I know these are tough questions, and you may find them difficult to answer. Sometimes the seawall of faith we've built around our lives doesn't hold out the waves of sin, and that's when our relationship with God is really tested. I think it's also when we begin to wonder if God is listening to our prayers. Now, if you're at that point in your life today, the question for you is, how are you treating God? Is God likely to answer your prayers by the way you treat Him? Now, you're not the first person to experience this kind of uh, vacuum in your prayer life. The Jews of the Old Testament had the same problem. Every time Israel caved into idolatry, every time they caved into sin, they had difficulty getting their prayers answered. And you and I both know that there is a direct relationship between sin and answered prayer. If we have an idolatrous lifestyle, if there are things that mean more to us than God means to us, then the chances are pretty good that we may have difficulty getting through to God. You see, God sent prophet after prophet to warn the Jewish people about their faulty relationship with Him. In fact, if you look at the prophets of the Old Testament who had something to say about God not hearing or answering the prayers of Israel, that list would read a little bit like a who's who of the Old Testament. Think about these men. For example, Ezekiel. God spoke through Ezekiel while he was a captive in Babylon. The Jews were exiled there as punishment for their idolatry. And from his house along the Kibar River, Ezekiel was taken by vision to Jerusalem. And there God showed him the pagan idols, all those detestable things that were going on right in the sanctuary of God. It was then that God made this startling statement to Ezekiel. He said, Therefore I will deal with them in anger. I will not look on them with pity or spare them, although they shout in my ears. I will not listen to them. Now that's Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 18. You may want to make note of that. Ezekiel 8, 18. Just imagine, God told His chosen people that because they had treated Him poorly, He wouldn't listen to them. They could shout right in his ears. It just wouldn't matter. Now, when God said that he would not listen to Israel's cry, the word that he used there, the Hebrew word kara, means to address a person by name. Now, just think about that. Jehovah said that even if his people addressed him by name, and by the way, that's something that they never dared to do out of respect for him. But even if they did, God would not listen to them. And why? because of idolatry. You see, God hates nothing more than He hates idolatry. And when people, even God's people, give their love and their allegiance to anyone or anything more than they love God, well, God simply refuses to hear their prayers. That's how deeply a faulty relationship with God affects our ability to get through to Him. And Ezekiel's warning is not the only one. What about Micah? Micah had the same message for Judah. Because God's people had embraced false prophets, which is a form of idolatry. Micah said, Then they will cry out to the Lord, but he will not answer them. At that time, he will hide his face from them because of the evil they have done. Now, that's Micah chapter 3, verse 4. And Micah used an even stronger word than did Ezekiel for crying out to God. The verb that Micah uses here is the verb to shriek. Even if the Jews shrieked to God, if they prayed in loud and boisterous terms, that still would be insufficient reason for God to answer them. 
In fact, he promised that he would even conceal his face from his people because of their idolatry. And why? Well, I think you and I have to ask ourselves the question, why? Why would God hide his face from us? Why would he say, don't bother praying, I'm not even listening? The answer is because they had been disrespectful to God. They had treated God poorly. They placed more value in idols than they did in God. And that's how deeply a faulty relationship with God affects our ability to get through to him. Oh, and the parade just goes on. Uh, Consider Zechariah. For Zechariah, it was the same story. He began his prophecy with these words. Now listen, the Lord was very angry with your forefathers. Therefore, tell this people, this what the Lord Almighty says, return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you. Now that's the first chapter of Zechariah, verses 2 and 3. You talk about starting off with a bang. I mean, there's high drama here in Zechariah. Jewish idolatry had alienated God from his people. Their relationship had become faulty, and their respect for Jehovah had fallen to an all-time low. So how did God respond to the idolatry of the Jews? Well, he said to Zechariah, when I called, they did not listen. So when they called, now listen to this, when they called, I would not listen, says the Lord Almighty. That's Zechariah 7, verse 13. Now, I don't want you to get the idea that Jehovah is a pouting God, you know, sitting up there in heaven playing tit for tat. God's refusal to hear the prayers of his people was divine judgment, not divine sulking. No, my friend, when you and I treat God poorly, when we're guilty of any form of idolatry, why do we expect God to answer our prayers? Why should God answer our prayers? You see, a faulty relationship with God dramatically impacts His willingness to answer you when you pray to Him. Now, we've looked at Ezekiel's warning and Micah's warning and Zechariah's warning. Enter the prophet Jeremiah. Three times Jeremiah was told to warn God's people that their idolatry kept them from getting answers to their prayers. Jeremiah 7, verse 16, God said, So do not pray for this people, nor offer any plea or petition for them. Do not plead with them, for I will not listen to you. (laughs) Sounds pretty harsh, doesn't it? Again, in Jeremiah 11, verse 14, he said, Do not pray for this people, nor offer any plea or petition for them, because I will not listen when they call to me in the time of their distress. Now, think about it. That's God talking about his own people. God says he will not even listen, let alone answer. And one more verse, this time Jeremiah 14, verse 12. God said, although they fast, I will not listen to their cry. Though they offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Instead, I will destroy them with the sword, with famine, and with the plague. Now, at this point, you may be saying to yourself, I had no idea verses like this were in the Bible. I thought God always heard our prayers, even if he didn't answer them. Well, my friend, read again. God's anger at idolatry was so fierce that he even refused to hear the Jewish prayers, let alone answer them. They had treated God poorly. He was looking for their repentance. And until that repentance came... There was just no use talking to him. Now, let me ask you a question. Are we any different today? I don't think we are. Often we're just as idolatrous as Israel was. We don't fall down before an idol of stone or treat it with respect due only to God. But we have the same penchant for idolatry, don't we? Let me give you an example. We'll pay, let's say, $40 for a ticket to a football game and then gripe about putting $5 in the offering plate. Now, isn't that cherishing football more than we cherish God? And if that's true, that's idolatry. Ladies, when do you take your break from housework in the afternoon? Is it just the right time to watch the soaps or the talk shows? Do you then rationalize that you don't have time to prepare a Sunday school lesson so you can't be a Sunday school teacher? Isn't that cherishing Oprah or Geraldo or someone more than cherishing God? And isn't that idolatry? If you can easily justify buying a new microwave, a new car, a new VCR, but you have trouble meeting your pledge to the church missions budget, haven't you fallen into a form of idolatry? 
My friend, if you're not getting answers to your prayers today, may I ask you to check your relationship with God? If you've been a bit idolatrous lately, if you've been putting other things or other people ahead of God, why are you surprised when your prayers are unanswered? God said they would be. You have to write your relationship with God. You have to begin to treat Him as the supreme being ought to be treated. And when you do that, (laughs) when you do that, watch your prayer potency grow. You see, how you treat God affects how He answers your prayers. Make sure you have a good relationship with Him. And then you won't have any trouble getting answers from God. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.